I'm going to. She's like, there's like nothing there. There's a big house. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so if you like breathing, you go for it. It's all good. I'll go for more of something. Yes. Take a trip down to going kayaking. I honestly couldn't tell you. I feel both. It is. Do you want? Good morning. Welcome to our beautiful church on this day. Megan just said, "Is it hot or cold?" And I said, "Yes." Just this, what a strange day here, but we're glad this is our last Sunday outside. We will be back in the sanctuary next Sunday. Um, don't forget to bring it. We're bringing masks, right? Bring your mask, and um, that'll be good. Please join me for the invocation. Lord God, we quiet our hearts in your presence this morning here with our brothers and sisters in Christ and among the different beautiful parts of your creation. We pray that you will be with us as we hear the word that you have for us this morning and bless it to our hearts and as we apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand and join me in the responsive call to worship. Let us praise God, creator of all that is. Let us praise Christ, the Redeemer. Let us praise the Spirit, the sustaining breath of life. Three in one and one in three, a holy mystery. Please join me in the unison prayer of confession. Father of lights, you created the heavens and the earth, making everything glorious. Jesus Christ, light of the world, our savior, you have made us your brothers and sisters and commissioned us to bear your name out in the world. Holy Spirit, our comforter and guide, you enlighten us with wisdom to know what is right and humility to make this confession that we have been poor stewards of the earth, clumsy and spiritless disciples, unjust in our dealings with others, divided in our witness and devotion to you. Forgive us, triune God. By your grace and love and fellowship, make of us new creations who are good and pleasing in your sight. Amen. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
you may be seated. I'm going to switch things around just a little bit from the way they are in the bulletin. Um, I'm going to have some announcements, and then we'll um, we'll do joys and concerns in a little bit. Um, announcements. As I said, next week we're back inside. Um, 10 a.m., everything usual. Grab a mask, um, and we will gather in the sanctuary. Uh, glass paperweights for those who, who did the uh, glass blowing with the men's fellowship group last Saturday. Those are done. They have a they have an amount of cooling time that they have to do before they can be given out. So um, yours is on the they, their names are on the box, right? Yeah. So grab yours on the way out. We just put them out so everybody can see how wicked talented you all are. Um, am I supposed to say something about this mint? Yeah, that's mint from the garden. Tea bags and or trash. Mint from the garden. Tea bags made from the mint. If you'd like to take those, um, I would like to thank the arts team for. You should have gotten little, got your little bottles. That's going to go with today's sermon, that your little mustard seed bottle. So I'd like to thank the arts team um, and Guy etched those, and um, he and he and the the arts team they all put their heads together and came up with this as a really really good sermon illustration, and you'll see why in a minute. So thank you to them for that. Um, I'm going to I'm going to punt on this, Marianne. We have made available, and this is not so much for all of you, but anybody who was listening online. We have made available um, a virtual membership. This is something that, um, t- that I've been talking with Session about for a while in the membership team, and we decided that in light of the fact that there are some people out there who join us regularly for worship but don't live in the area or you know, for some other reason can't be here with us physically, so we decided to extend to them a virtual membership. It's a, um, an honorary membership, if you will. They don't obviously join us here so because there's only so much that they can do to be involved but they're with us um, regularly for worship and we thought it would be a nice way to recognize them um, and kind of welcome them into the fold even though they can't be with us in the physical sense so there is um, a form to fill out Tammy is it on the website too or it's on our website and it's on our Facebook page and you can fill out that form and send it in and we will send you a little certificate with um, saying that you're you're one of us now for better or for worse and um, that will, you'll get our newsletter. Um, you can let me know if you have prayer concerns, all that good stuff. So if you're interested in that, check out our website, which is hockeyprez.org, or our Facebook page, and um, you'll find that form on there. Uh, speaking of the Men's Fellowship Group, they have another outing scheduled that is open to all. Women can go as well. It's July 10th, and it will be at Lehigh Valley Sporting Clays in Copley. They're going skeet shooting. Um, they need a head count. They're much stricter about the head count than they were at the Banana Factory, but they need a head count, so we would like to hear from you if you want to go by Saturday, July 3rd. That's a week before the event. They're meeting on the 10th. What time on the 10th? Yeah, be, there at be there at 8.30 in the morning, and I assume most of you know where that is. I don't. Um, but if you would like to go, please get your name to Guy, um, and he will get that. He would be able to get that turned in and get them a head count. I think that is all I have for announcements. Anybody have anything I missed that you want to announce? No? Okay. Children's chat. Where's my buddy? Oh. Come here. Come here. Ezra. <laughs> no, we're not coming up? Okay. So... <laughs> He's got to put his coat on first. I told you we don't know if it's hot or cold. Okay, is that better? Had a boy. Okay, so now I have a question for you. What is this? Okay, you're you're actually you're very correct. That is a seed, right? And that is a seed, and this is a plant, right? And when you put a seed in the ground, he's got this. <laughs> we did not rehearse it ahead, really. But right, you put a seed in the ground or in a pot like this with some dirt, and what do you do to take care of it? Water it. Right. And then it grows into a plant or into a flower or into a tree, right? Or into basically anything, right. And you know what? 
we, God says in the Bible, Jesus says that we are like those little tiny seeds like what you have. And because God loves us, we grow. And we, we grow big, and we grow big and strong and healthy, and we can tell other people about Jesus. That's right. That's exactly right. But I need dirt. You need dirt, yes. Yeah, but God gives us the dirt, and he gives us the water, and he gives us the sunshine to make these plants grow, right? And he does the same thing for us. Because, like, look how little Ezra is, and look how tall you are, and then look how tall your daddy is. And that's And your mama. That's like a, that's like a seed, and you're a middle, middle-sized plant, and mom and dad are trees. Yeah, mom, right? And so, but that's when... That's Right, exactly. You're like step, stair steps. But. Ezra's the tiniest, a little bit bigger, and then the biggest. Right, that's right. But now God does that with us. We start out like little seeds, and then we grow tall, and we grow big. Right. And then we grow big, and then because God loves us, and we're big, and we can tell other people that God loves them, right? And that's how it works. So we're just like little tiny seeds when we start out. We're little tiny seeds like Ezra's a little tiny seed. You're looking at the candy. <laughs> Let's say a quick prayer and then we'll be done, okay? Yes, okay. Uh, yes, okay. Dear God, thank you for making us as little tiny seeds that grow with your love and your care into big plants and to big, happy people who can tell other people how much Jesus loves them. Thank you, God. Amen. Okay. Do you want to take one for your brother? No, it's his one. Well, I gave him a choice. See, that's... One for you, one for Abby. <laughs> While he's doing that, please consider signing up to be the lay reader. Um We've got some we've got some people on here, but I'm gonna put this here. If you haven't signed up, please think about doing that. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. Would you please bow your heads for the prayer for illumination? Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading is Samuel chapter 15, verses 34 through chapter 16, verse 3. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gabeah of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Saul, Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice. I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I named to you. The New Testament reading is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 10, 14 to 17. We, so we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all. 
therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Our gospel reading this morning is from the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 through 34. The kingdom of God is like this, he said. A man scatters seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day. The seed sprouts and grows, although he doesn't know how. The soil produces a crop by itself, first the blade, then the head, then the full grain on the head. As soon as the crop is ready, he sends for the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed that, when sown upon the soil, is the smallest of all the seeds on the ground. And when sown, it comes up and grows taller than all the garden plants and produces large branches so that the birds of the sky can nest in its shade. He was speaking the word to them with many parables like these as they were able to understand. He did not speak to them without a parable. Privately, however, he explained everything to his own disciples. The word of the Lord. One of the most amazing sights in this country, I have to tell you, is a Kansas wheat field just before the harvest. Now this isn't one of those things that people automatically jump to when they're thinking of the must-see sites in the U.S., but I would recommend that everyone try to see a full, ripe wheat field in person at some point. And if you do, you will have the fullest possible understanding of the line in America the Beautiful that says, amber waves of grain. Now, while a field of wheat is beautiful, even poetic, to watch it waving in the prairie wind, Farming itself isn't nearly so beautiful. It is hot, dirty work. Even with all the advancements in farm machinery, wheat combines now offer air-conditioned cabs and Bluetooth technology. It is still hot, exhausting work. But the real miracle in a field of wheat or in a field of any crop starts with the seed. Seeds are amazing. You probably remember when we all studied DNA in school, how it all works. The whole DNA of the fully grown plant is already present within the seed. An acorn, for example, has the plants for a huge, mighty oak tree right there inside of it. And the farmer, whatever he or she is planting, probably doesn't have an intimate, detailed knowledge of everything that's inside the seed and the whole process that takes it from seed to harvest. Some knowledge, yes, a basic working knowledge. But the miracle of what happens that transforms a seed to a plant is, as my mother would say, something that only God could arrange. Jesus didn't choose the illustration of a mustard seed just arbitrarily. The mustard seed is an amazing little creation. You have one in front of you in that little jar. If you didn't get one, let Guy know and he'll hand you one. Take a look at it. It's teeny tiny, right? You might even have a hard time seeing it. It's so teeny tiny. In fact, there's one in this jar. Can you see it? Probably not, no. That's how teeny tiny it is. But in each one of those seeds is the DNA of a mustard seed plant. Now we don't see a lot of mustard seed plants around here, and the ones we do see are an entirely different variety than what would have grown in the climate of the Middle East. The variety that is most likely the one that Jesus is referencing is called Brassica nigra, and yes, I had to look that up. It grows into a bush, but it's a huge bush. It's usually about eight feet tall, and with big, broad leaves that birds nest under to protect themselves from the hot desert sun. 
So when Jesus says the mustard seed is the smallest of all the seeds, and that when it sprouts, it grows into the tallest of the garden plants, he is making a very strong statement about the kingdom of God. And of course, we are the seeds in this parable. We are the seeds after being nurtured by God, and we bloom into a beautiful plant. In Luke 17, 21, Jesus says, the kingdom of God is within you. So we really can't miss Jesus' meaning in this metaphor, in this parable. Intimacy with Christ grows in us as certainly and as effortlessly as seeds grow. In verses 26 and 27, Jesus says that a man scatters seeds on the ground, and he sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows, although the farmer doesn't know how. In other words, we have very little to do with how God works. In fact, we have so little to do with it that we could just go to sleep. It might actually be better if we did sleep through the whole thing, snug and safe, resting like babies in mom's arms. This kind of trust, trust so deep that we can sleep without anxiety, is much more useful to us than fussing over the little seed, dousing it with pesticide and repotting it and clucking anxiously over whether or not it's getting enough sun. And believe me, I know what I'm talking about. Among the easiest plants in the world to grow are succulents, right? Especially cactus. They're so low maintenance. Every single time I try to grow a cactus, it dies. I can't get it through my head that they don't need to be constantly watered and fussed over. I make a big deal about taking care of my new cactus, and in a matter of weeks, I have yet another dead cactus on my hands. It's a gift, really. <laughs> the kingdom of God is the sleepy, restful trust that Jesus is talking about here. This doesn't always compute for us. We like to work hard. It makes us feel like we're doing the important work. Being busy makes sense to us. It fits our normal way of being human. Because when we work hard, we get great results, right? We get well-run workplaces, tidy homes, and perfect lawns, and svelte bodies, you name it. And there's nothing wrong with that, of course, but, if our, but our way of operating is not God's way. It's not like the kingdom of God. So where we run into difficulty is when we confuse the way of the kingdom of God with the way we usually do things. Now Jesus is calling us here to a very different way of being with ourselves, with each other, and with God by asking us to recognize that spiritual growth and intimacy with God arises as naturally as a seed grows. The harvest will come without us fussing over it because God loves us. And it's this love that is the power of growth. It's this same love that transforms the tiniest and most insignificant looking seed into a big, lush bush that gives rest and shade to the singing birds. Now, the mustard seed was a common metaphor in first century Palestine for the smallest of anything. So when Jesus says the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, he means his followers. His disciples then were a bunch of ragged, struggling people, full of doubts, full of fears, unable to comprehend all that much of what Jesus said and did. Is that sound a little familiar? Does it sound like us? Because it sounds like us because it is us. How many times do I say this up here? We are the disciples now. The kingdom of God is coming alive through us. Now I used to be one of those people who liked nothing more than to sit at home by myself in a quiet corner in what I call my Jesus chair in a quiet room in my house, reading the Bible and journaling and praying and meditating and reading deeply spiritual books, sometimes by, who's that guy I like, C.S. Lewis? And these books usually have more passages in them that are highlighted than not highlighted. But then I don't, didn't do anything else with all of that. And there's nothing wrong with those kinds of spiritual practices, of course, they're great. But if we just absorb all of this spiritual richness and nurturing and never use it to reach out and share with others, we're just seeds. If we're going to help grow the kingdom of God, we have to be willing to present our scruffy little tiny seed selves to God and say, here I am, grow me. 
Now there's also an emphasis on this parable in this parable on the mystery and the surprise of God. We live in an age where the mystery and surprise of all life, including God's power, are kind of being squeezed out of our consciousness. In this parable, Jesus asks us not to close our imaginations too quickly because there is a dynamic, vital power that is beyond our comprehension. Jesus suggests here in this parable that history has been made ready just as fields are made ready for planting. So think about this. Through the life of Israel and its prophets, through the prophecy of John the Baptist, the world was made ready for the kingdom of God. And then came Jesus, busting onto the scene and bringing a new view of God. And now the work has shifted to us as his disciples to show the world that Jesus isn't just another interesting figure in history. He's not just another prophet, but that he is God, and that through him, we are able to be closer to God than ever. That through him, God is here. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is one of those things that we talk about a lot, but it's rather hard to get our heads around. We're not really sure what that means. So let me put it into our context. I have seen the kingdom of God at work here in our church. Sometimes it changes us so slowly that we don't really notice until we step back and take a look at where we are now compared to where we've been. I've seen attitudes shift from worrying about maintaining an institution to thinking about how God wants, us to, wants to use us here in our beautiful old building on North Front Street. In the almost two years that I've been here, I've seen us baptize children and adults alike. I've seen us welcome new members and bid a sad till we meet again to members who have passed away. I've seen people show up to serve the community around us by serving meals to the hungry, taking grocery gift cards to those in needs, donating clothing to local agencies for distribution. The kingdom of God is growing in us. We've started looking at outreach as something that doesn't just happen in the Whitehall area a couple of times a year, but meets the needs we see at our doorstep right here in Hakandakwa. We've started to talk about missions as work we do with our own hands instead of writing a check to pay for someone else to do the work. We used to look for ways to save money and now we look for ways we can be generous. Seeds of the kingdom have been planted in us, buried in the ground where we can't see them sprout and develop. But we know that life is happening, that good fruit is developing from those seeds. Jesus' parable about the mustard seed is an illustration of how the kingdom of God grows exponentially from tiny beginnings to unexplainable size. And now the focus is on the process of healthy, inevitable, unstoppable growth from something small to something huge. Now the kind of seed that Jesus chooses as his example is pretty interesting because mustard is a bush, yes, but in the Middle East, it's considered a weed. If you Google how to grow mustard, you'll find instructions for planting and harvesting the leaves and the stalks, but you'll also find this warning. Harvest before the plant goes to seed because the seeds scatter everywhere, and pretty soon you'll have an uncontrollable crop of mustard plants all over the place. So what is this saying to us about the kingdom of God? The thing about parables, remember, is that they challenge us with truths that we might find uncomfortable. For example, if your idea of the kingdom of God is angels playing harps and floating on puffy clouds, you might not like the picture that Jesus draws of the kingdom of God. And if you think the kingdom of God is something that will happen at the end of time, but has no connection to life right now that you can just go on living as you please, what I'm about to tell you might make you squirm a bit. Jesus says the kingdom is now. It's already in us, and it's spreading like weeds. And when the crop is ripe, you better have your sickle ready, because the harvest will happen immediately. So what does it look like, the kingdom of God that's here now? It may be imperceptible at first. Every time you choose love instead of anger, every time you choose generosity instead of greed, Every time you work for another's good instead of your own, you're participating in the kingdom of God. 
Every time you engage in the practices of Bible study and prayer and service, you're participating in the kingdom of God. Every time you set aside your own agenda and ask God in all humility to show you God's agenda, you are becoming more and more like Christ. And as you grow into Christ-likeness, the kingdom of God is advancing. It's growing and it will not be stopped. No matter how small or insignificant its beginnings may seem to you, the kingdom of God is here. It is growing in you, it is growing in me, it is growing in us, and it is growing all around us. So grab your sickle, get ready for the harvest. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand and we have made adjustments to the Apostles' Creed yet again. Um, we have, this is actually the wording taken out of the PCUSA Book of Confessions, so this is the official Presbyterian Apostles' Creed, and it's a little bit different than what we've had, but this is what we're going to go with for now. So I just wanted to point it out because everybody says different things, and then you all come and yell at me later. So let's just, what we have here is what we're going with, okay? Okay. Please, please recite the Apostles' Creed with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. As we move into a time of prayer, I have um, a few joys and concerns to share with you. Um, as always, we are keeping Deb's brother, Dan Reed, in our prayers as he's dealing with prostate cancer. Um, we need to remember, remember, wow, Dave Herzog in our prayers. He is dealing with some health issues as well. Um, Guy and I went about a week ago and visited Gooch and Marie in their new digs. They're doing very well. Um, Gooch just sits there and the nurses fuss over him and he is just eating that up. Um, and they are hoping to join us in church next week. So it would be nice to see them. They're both, they're doing really well. Um, they seem very happy in their new place. It's bigger than my first apartment. So I think they're doing all right. Um, but it was good to see them and they send their love and, and hopefully they will be with us next week. Um, so Dave Herzog, Dan Reed, I wanted to tell you about them. Any others that I need to add to the prayer list, Scott? Okay, great. Dolly's been in the hospital, but she's coming home. You said you think tomorrow? Okay, great. Thank you. So we will we will pray for her. Others, Sally. Continue prayers for our granddaughter who's still traveling across the states. Okay. Uh, we think she's in with, with either in Michigan or Wisconsin at the Okay. Her name is a Amy? Amy. Amy. Um, the Hefner's granddaughter, Amy, if you could hear that, is driving um coast to coast she's driving west to seattle where she is uh, have some work business and um so she's driving by herself with her little dog and so um yeah Maisie. and um so grandma's a little uncomfortable with that so we're keeping we're keeping her in our prayer she said she thinks she's either in michigan or wisconsin. or wisconsin yeah so she's in the midwest those are dangerous people out there <laughs> i i hope she you know <laughs> yeah trust me i i, I know them i am them um. <laughs> okay, any, anything else we need to add to our prayer list? Okay. Let us pray. Lord God, on this early summer day, we 
gather together to worship you, to hear the word that you have for us, Lord, and to pray the prayers that are so familiar, but every word means something in our hearts, Lord. And Lord, we are grateful for the message that Jesus has for us this morning in his parable of the mustard seed. And Lord, when we look at the mustard seed that we have in our hands and see how tiny it is and know that it can grow into a bush that is taller than any of us and that offers resting, healing shade against the desert sun, Lord, we realize what this says that you think of us and the plans that God has for us and the ways that we can help usher in and sustain the kingdom of God on this earth. And Lord, help us to keep the image of the mustard seed in our minds and in our hearts this week and to know that no matter how insignificant we may feel sometimes, you have a plan for us that is greater and more amazing than anything that we could even imagine. And Lord, we thank you for that and we stand on that promise this morning. And Lord, we pray that you will continue to bless us as a congregation as we continue to grow and thrive and use our gifts and our resources to help those in need, Lord, as Christ intended and as Christ commanded us to do. And Lord, we are grateful for one another this morning, for this way of being with one another um, and the difficult year that we have come through. And Lord, we pray that we will take the lessons that we learned during this past year with us as we go forward. And we pray your blessing on us next week as we gather again in our sanctuary home and worship you there in the way that we are accustomed to, Lord. And help us to remember that, Lord, no matter where we are, you are there. And Lord, we lift to you this morning the concerns that you have heard. We pray for Dan and we pray for Dave and his health issues, Lord. We're grateful for healing for Marie. And Lord, we lift to you, Dolly, this morning. We pray that you will continue to heal her, Lord, as she comes home and can rest. We pray that you will continue to draw near to her. And Lord, we are grateful to know that you are in the car with Amy as she's traveling and that your hand is on the wheel and that you are there to guide and protect her on every step of her journey, just as you are with all of us, Lord. And we pray for your comfort and peace for Sally and Tom as they're watching her trip. Help them to always remember that you are in the car with her every moment. And Lord, we are so grateful for this beautiful morning, for the gentle breeze, for the sounds of the birds, for the laughter of the children. And Lord, we pray that you will go with us as we go from this place and we go our separate ways, Lord. Guide and direct our steps and keep us safe in the palm of your hand until we gather here again as a family next week. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who calls us, who redeems us, and who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The offertory still doesn't look quite like it used to. The, uh, the, the, the uh, thank you, the offering plate. My brain is so tired this morning. <laughs> The offering plate is up here. Um, do you have a little yeah. offertory, Diddy? Okay. If you haven't and you would like to, please feel free to come up. Megan's going to play us a tune.
Lord, we thank you for these tithes and offerings, these gifts that were given generously to us, and we give generously to you. We pray that you will use these for the furthering of your kingdom. Amen. And now with wisdom and understanding, with justice and mercy, with courage and commitment, may we be blessed by the God who has loved us all into life. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us share that peace with one another from a safe distance. Peace be with you. I want to roll. <laughs> and now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.